So now that we have a good grasp on some reproductive isolation mechanisms, the idea of postzygotic mechanisms and prezygotic mechanisms, the idea that there's a biological species concept to work off of, and there are other species concepts to work off of, we're going to do some real hardcore macroevolution study now. And this is going to be all focused on the big subtopic of this lecture that hopefully you've already started to sort of think about is this idea of speciation. And we're going to look at that in much greater detail for the next couple of flowcharts. So we'll entitle this first flowchart, Speciation, Roman numeral 1. In order to understand speciation really strongly, really, really with a great foundation, we have to establish a well uh, understood, a well established working definition. Something that we can constantly refer back to and see, are we doing speciation? Speciation can be broadly defined as the evolution, because this is evolution, of course, macroevolution specifically, of a new species, okay, or of new species, many different species. So this specifically, this evolution, this speciation of new species happens and occurs in certain uh, formats, and it occurs specifically when populations, okay, when a population becomes and this is why we studied it so much previously, we call it reproductively isolated. This is a, and this is, this reproductive isolation is based off of which concept? Reproductively, um, we want to say isolated, isolated, reproductively isolated, and this is from the biological species concept of Ernst Mayer, um, becomes reproductively isolated, but it also has to be in reference to and from somebody, from other populations and those other populations are of the same species okay of the same species so we're having a small portion of the species in question diverge in a sense and because they're diverging we no longer have gene flow there's no gene flow between the overall population. We have one population that becomes isolated. It is not flowing its genes with the rest of the population. There is no gene flow between this isolated, reproductively isolated population because there's no reproduction. There's no reproduction, thus there's no gene flow. And because there's no gene flow, we have something called divergence. And specifically, the gene pools themselves diverge. And because the gene pools diverge, basically the genetic composition of the organism entirely, the organism's genes themselves, are going to change. Genetic compositions change. And because genetic compositions change, you have changes at the gene level, which create variation, which create new things for natural selection to act on, and thus you have a new species. That is speciation in a nutshell. Everything that we just did here was speciation. So let's actually see this happening. We can actually describe this happening by looking at two different speciation events, something called allopatric speciation, which we'll do in this video, and sympatric speciation, which we'll do in a later video. So we're going to keep this on the side and work off of this. We're going to first look at allopatric, so it's spelled allopatric speciation. This is the first type. This is actually, we're going to put a side note, this is the most common type of speciation that we'll see in nature. Okay, most common speciation event, and let's break down this word just as all biologists like to do. Allo, this means other, okay? This means other, and Patrick over here usually refers to homeland, or I like to con consider it other country. You can consider it homeland. I've seen both variations. So what is allopatric speciation? We can consider allopatric speciation the following. It's a specific speciation event that occurs because of the other homeland, because of an other country that plays into the equation. Specifically, what I mean by that is that allopatric speciation occurs when one population, when one population uh, becomes what we would consider geographically Okay, geographically, we're using this term. Why? Because we're talking about somebody that's in an other country, different country, occurs when one population becomes geographically isolated from the rest of the population. So isolated from rest of 
of, let's say, not even the population, but the rest of the species itself. Because what we're trying to do is create a new species. We're trying to evolve a new species. But we have to reproductively isolate them. A good way to reproductively isolate them, a good way to prevent gene flow, to create the divergence of gene pools, and to create composition of genetic change is to separate them geographically. We're going to geographically isolate them utilizing allopatric speciation, which is going to cause two major and critical speciation events that are the following. Because of this geographic isolation, you're going to have this new isolated population evolve on its own. So we'll say evolves on its own because it's now separated, it's isolated, and this isolation will happen, and thus this isolation will cause evolution via either natural selection or what we've learned in microevolution genetic drift. Now remind me, why do I see genetic drift in this population? Well, this is because genetic drift acts on small populations. This is when one population one small population nonetheless becomes geographically isolated, thus either natural selection or genetic drift can act on it, and thus different traits will start to be more or less selected than others as compared to the home population, as compared to, let's say, the Sympatric population, the same country population. We're now on a different country, thus we have different evolution rules, thus we have different ways of natural selection and genetic drift acting on us, thus we will evolve evolution. Very powerful stuff here. In addition, when we have allopatric speciation, this actually interrupts gene flow altogether. How does it interrupt gene flow? Well, first of all, we have no gene flow. That's because of this speciation event. So we check that off the list. But how does it interrupt gene flow? Well, this is simply because of the geographical isolation. We can say for uh, a fact that this type of isolation can be due to things like this. It can be due to, let's say, due to things like um, real-life geographic barriers that sometimes form in populations in the sense that sometimes what's going to happen is in real life you'll have an earthquake, let's say, and that earthquake will form a mountain on one side and a valley on the other. I don't know if that's actually what happens. Just imagine for purposes of this example, you have created a barrier between, let's say, one population, this is population 1, and then this is population 1A, right? It's a subpopulation. Let's imagine you just put a barrier right in between them. And this geographic barrier that you put in between them will cause natural selection to occur differently in population 1A than population 1 because there's a different environment. This barrier that has, I just made right here causes differences, causes allopatric speciation. In addition, you could also have this due to the migration uh, event, and specifically migration uh, it usually is of a small group of the population. Because you have migration of a small group, you have an isolated group, and thus you have the opportunity for genetic drift to happen. And thus genetic drift will be no gene flow, gene pools diverge, and genetic compositions change, aka evolution will happen. Again, allopatric. Things are moving away from home, other home, other country, other country speciation. And also, finally, we always have to remember, this could also be due to random isolation. Let's say we have a random storm. This is an example I used in microevolution that blows away a small portion of one island population onto a new island. The new island is a totally new game. And thus, because we have a new game, we have an interruption of gene flow, aka island one and island two individuals will never flow their genes together. They will never reproductive reproduce together because they're isolated geographically and thus reproductively and thus they will both evolve separately. They will evolve and speciate allopatrically from other countries, other areas because of geographic isolation. Overall, we can end this video. A lot of information I've thrown at you, I understand, but let's just remember our end result. And this is something you can really work off of and drive home. The end result, and we've been saying this over and over again, but now we're going to put words to it, is that interbreeding, the idea of reproductive um, success between two different, let's say, populations will not occur, will absolutely not, will not occur even if the populations will not occur, let's write this down, even if populations uh, are brought back together. And what I mean by this, and this is powerful stuff, is that if I take, remember that island two situation that we have, let me finish writing this before I talk, brought back together. Remember uh, I had that island one and island two, 
let's imagine that they, those two things speciate. They, they become two different species. If I bring island two individuals back onto island one, island one and island two individuals will not interbreed. Do you want to know why? This is because they both have become and they became reproductively isolated. They cannot physically or mentally or behaviorally ever reproduce with each other simply because of this speciation event. They grew up and evolved on different countries. Allopatric speciation is different other country speciation that we see that evolves and causes evolution in two separate environments. And even if you bring those two populations back together, they will not be able to breed because of the reproductive isolation set forth by the allopatric speciation. So as you can see, we have speciation happening. We have two different species evolving and they will evolve and stay separate from each other.